this bad. Wiring for LS has always seems to be the most daunting part of the swap for people. They either think that it's going to cost them thousands of dollars or it's going to take a ton of work. Neither of those are true. I mean, you can spend thousands of dollars, sure. Like there's companies that sell just the harness for like 1100 bucks on top of having to buy an ECU, stuff like that. It doesn't have to be like that. You can do it really cheap. That's what we're going to do in today's video. And you know what that means? That means we're back to work on the Dime a Dozen S10 build. This is where we're going fast for cheap, inspired by Hot Rod Magazine's Cheap Thrills Dart. We're working on a budget and we're trying to go fast. How was that for a quick recap? <laughs> so I would say one of the top three questions I get most often is about the wiring for LS swaps. Um, if a stock ECU will work, if they have to get a Holly, uh, Mega Squirt, all that sort of stuff. Now, for the record, I started off with uh, stock ECUs and HB tuners. And uh, I think that is doable not super user friendly i think the most user friendly one that i've dealt with is definitely the holly like terminator systems they're about as close to plug and play as you can get you have to hook up like four wires the thing that makes the holly nice is it's super user friendly you just select stuff from a drop down menu there's usually like three to five choices for stuff except for injectors uh, you just tell it what you want it to do it comes up with its own bass tune you flash it into the ecu and it nine times out of ten will fire up. Sometimes there's stupid little issues here and there. But generally, I do think that the Holly system's super user friendly. It's by far my favorite. But the downside of the Holly system is they're like 1200 bucks now, so not super budget friendly, which is the whole point of this truck is trying to do things as cost effective, not as cheap as possible, but as cost effective as possible. So that means we're probably not going to go with the Holly unless we got a heck of a deal on one, <laughs> which is just. Not realistic. So obviously we're not gonna go Holly on the Dime a Dozen S10, so what are we gonna do? Well, I think the cheapest way to get your pretty basic LS swap, in this case, it's a cam 6.0, stock intake, stock heads, just has cam valve springs. Actually, on this particular motor, you can see we did the intake delete so that we're just going to crank it over and I'm gonna spray starting fluid in it and it's gonna run like that. Not the best mileage, but man, the power it makes. <laughs> No, we are going to use a stock computer on this deal. Uh, stock computers, they basically give them away. <laughs> like you can find them on marketplace for 20 bucks. A lot of times when you go out and buy uh, a motor, they'll just be like, here, take this stock harness and ECU, get it out of here, I don't need it. <laughs> and like I said, HP tuners, you can use HP tuners, EFI Live, there's probably another one that I'm not aware of, those are the two big ones. I use HP tuners. So I think something like this where it's pretty simple, you're not gonna need to control a ton of stuff. Uh, this one in particular, it's literally just controlling the engine. So I'll just need to control like timing, stuff like that. Come up with uh, an airflow table for it. Stock ECU is kind of perfect. Even on Goldie Hawn, if you remember, it was an engine pretty similar to this, but it had a turbo on it. And it was all really simple stuff, manual boost controller, so we didn't have to control a bunch of things. Um, stock ECU was working really well for that. I think that when you want to go from a stock ECU to something like a Holley or or fuel tech or mega squirt micro skirt things like that is when you start getting into something where you're having to control a bunch of stuff that uh the stock ecu just can't really do like this there's boost controller launch retard two-step all sorts of stuff that uh the holly just makes it real simple to do and there are ways you can kind of manipulate a stock ecu to do that but it's not as effective or you just have to buy a separate box like the msd two-step box that i put on goldie hawn uh, a bunch of stuff like that so anyway, long story short, we're putting a stock ECU on this thing. Now, luckily I have the stock ECU for this, so that saves us a few bucks, which is awesome. So that leads us to the next thing is, what are we gonna do for the harness? Now, of course I could cut the stock one down. That's doable, lots of people do it. The site lt1swap.com has all the information you'd ever need for it, but I cannot stand doing it. Even though I seem to be doing it a lot, I hate wiring, cannot stand it. It's so boring, it's so monotonous, uh, I just, it's not fun. So that does mean we are going to be buying a harness. Now there's a ton of options out there. There's places like PSI Conversions, um, 
other places I can't think of off the top of my head, but they all want like five, six, seven hundred bucks for a harness for a stock ECU. Crazy. But those aren't the only options. Now, much like the motor mounts, we went to eBay and that is where we got this. This is our LS swap harness. Now, before I tell you the price, I'm gonna show it to you. Came with instructions, all stapled together, looking nice. Tools required, blah, blah, blah. Diagram for the relay. Little deal there. See, super detailed instructions. Now here's our actual harness. Let's lay this thing out. So first impressions, the quality is not really too bad. It's all loomed. I cannot stand this plastic loom, first of all. Um, but it is all loomed. It's all electrical taped together, so everything looks pretty nice and tidy. All the plugs are not labeled, but um, there's only a couple that you can plug into the wrong spot. Everything else is its own plug, and where the plug is, you wouldn't be able to reach it to the thing that it could plug into. So let's go through everything. Here's our little fuse block. Here's our switched 12-volt wire. We'll have to hook that up to a switch so that when the engine's cranking over, that sees full 12 volt. A lot of times, one of the mistakes I'll see is people will hook that to like a dirty 12 volt or something that when it's cranking, it drops down to eight or nine volts and then their engine won't start. And they'll be like, what the heck is going on? This LS sucks, these things are trash. Here's a chassis ground. This is like four wires here, all bundled together. Nice one clean ground. These plug into the ECU. Obviously this is for an early red blue ECU. Here's our OBD2 port. This is what we're gonna be tuning through. There's all the underdash wires for like speedo and tack and things like that. I don't know how many of those we'll actually be using. These two go to the main post on the starter, the main battery post. This is where the harness and ECU gets its battery power from. So these ones are pretty important. I don't understand why they never seem to put these on the same terminal. They're always separate terminals. That baffles me, but whatever. This one I'm pretty sure is crank sensor. And then we've got these ones here are EV1 style injectors. You'll notice that this is a transmission plug for a 4L60. And this is the vehicle speed sensor off the transmission. I'll go into why that's on this harness in a second. Uh, coil plug, here's our O2 sensor. Uh, I think this is map sensor. This is probably knock. Here's the all important ground at the back of the heads. This ground at the back of the heads is probably as important as the switch 12 volt. If your shit's not running right, this is one of the things to check. More injector plugs, coil pack, other uh, O2 sensor, because like I said, this is for a stock ECU, so there's two O2 sensors. On the Holly stuff, there's usually only one. Alternator plug, which is something that they don't include with the Holly system, which I don't understand. It'd be so easy for them to include that but they never do. This, I believe, is coolant temp. That is MAF sensor. And I think this is throttle position, and this is IAC. Might have that one backwards. I always mix those plugs up. So yeah, there's our harness. Now, as to why there's a transmission plug on this harness when we have a power glide in it, non-electric. I have this theory that all of the LS1 style swap harnesses on eBay come from the same place, or they are the same. That's my theory. And I have this theory because I've used these harnesses four times now. Well, five if we count the Fiero, because this harness is on the Fiero. Like, same whole deal down here. These two are separated. Here's all the underdash wires. Same harness. Now, because I have this theory and I've used so many of these harnesses, and all except one have worked. There was one in the white box Chevy that was here that gave us a bunch of issues. Still don't know if it was the harness or something else going on, but every other one has worked fine. So because of this theory, uh, these harnesses are usually 150 to $200, but you can find them a lot cheaper. Now this harness, for example, was $99, less than $100 for an LS swap harness. Would I recommend this to anyone? Um, I don't know, <laughs> but like I said, I've used these harnesses in the past and at a bunch of different price points, they've all been identical. They've all looked exactly like this. They all have the EV1 style plugs and they all have a 4L60 uh, transmission wire. You would think that you could find one cheaper without that, 
but they all come like this. They're all pre-made. They just sell them by the truckload so they can drop the prices super cheap. Now, I would say if you're in a position to 100% buy American, absolutely. But not everybody's in a position to. American stuff is expensive. So there is one thing we have to modify on the harness and that is swap the injector plugs. Our stock truck intake uses Multec style, like the factory style truck injectors, uh, not EV1 style. If you guys don't know the difference, I will try to find... Where are you? This is Multec with the deal on the side here. And these more rectangular ones are EV1 style. I'm a big fan of EV1. They are super easy to connect and disconnect. You just push this thing down and you pull it off. So I'm gonna get those cut off and the new ends spliced on and then we'll start throwing this thing in the truck. And because it's a pre-made harness, the uh, layout on everything and like where you can put the ECU is kind of predetermined. Um, we can run it through, well, you could probably run it through this. Uh, the easiest thing to do is either put the ECU on the firewall here, which we might end up doing, or up here somewhere. Um, I would rather have it in the cab, just keep things kind of nice and clean. Plus we already have this hole there we can run most of the harness through. So that's just another thing you have to consider with pre-made harnesses is everything, like if you're trying to have a super clean engine bay, it's gonna be a little bit more difficult. So anyway, I'm gonna get to work changing these plugs over and then we'll start throwing it on the truck. All right. Got all the EV1 plugs cut off this harness and all the old Moltec injectors spliced on. Just use basic crimp connectors and heat shrink them. And I did cut the wiring off for the transmission. We're not gonna need that. So now to start throwing it on the truck and I was trying to figure out where I wanted to run the harness. Typically I like to run it right through behind the intake. That way everything's nice and kind of hidden. Like on uh, Sean's Malibu here. You can't really see a whole lot of the engine harness itself aside from right in here. But again, like I was saying, with this one being pre-made, here's one side of the engine, here's the passenger side, so the harness comes off over here. So there just so happened to be like the, uh, two, and, two and a quarter, maybe two inch hole in the firewall right there. So we're going to feed it through and it'll come straight up over there. So it's going to be, I mean, visible, but... Not super gaudy out in the open. I don't know why I haven't pulled these hoses off yet. <laughs> so if you've never done it before, it's definitely easier to feed this side through instead of that little bit. Even though we need all this harness out here and only that little bit in the truck, all these connectors are a lot smaller, so it's a ton easier to fit those through the firewall. So we got the harness all sprawled out across the engine so we can take a little bit better look at things. You can see here what I was talking about with the harness coming up by the firewall. It does have a grommet on the harness that we can slide. So like this, we can slide that back up to fill the hole in the firewall. That way it's not just going to cut itself against the edge there. So here is where the injectors go. I'm gonna put that back in the thing. Here's our map sensor. This will come up to the back of the intake like that. Coil plug. Here's a O2 sensor. And those go down to the starter and crank sensor. So that's all fine and dandy. I might route those on the inside of the header there. We'll just kind of play that by ear once we get to that point. Here's our uh, cam sensor. We'll go ahead and get that plugged in real quick. And we don't have an oil sensor. <laughs> All right. 
we won't worry about oil pressure it'll be fine if we have a gauge then uh we'll know that it can be bad we'll just uh listen for the lifter tick i can honestly say this is the first one i've ordered maybe that's the difference you got to pay the extra 50 bucks for an oil pressure sensor yeah this is the first one i've had where it didn't have that and it's usually like a little it looks like this but it ha has a yellow grommet on it this is dumb this is a dumb challenge So that will go down for the O2. These will be injectors, coil pack. We'll run that through there. You will come up there. Where's your friend? Alternator and coolant temp. This will go to the alternator. There's our IAC. And these three we are not using, so we will try to hide them somewhere. Tighten the intake down, get the injectors plugged in, and then we're more or less good up here. Got the coil packs on, everything is taken care of out here, aside from just plugging in stuff uh, for the crank sensor and hooking up the starter. Starter's not bolted up right now. And obviously the oxygen sensors, because those aren't in right now either. So the only things left to actually wire up are the fuel pump, which will be pretty easy. We got to plug the computer in. I gotta find a spot for this chassis ground, which there should be a good spot on the firewall here. This switched 12 volt, which uh, I don't know where I'm going to get that from just yet. We might end up just uh, putting some toggle switches in this thing. Just one for ignition, one for fuel pump. And call it a day. <laughs> for simplicity, it might be worth it. Now, if you're in this situation and you don't want to run toggle switches, so what you would do on your GM car at least, uh, I don't know about Fords or Chryslers, but on your GM cars, the uh, wire to your distributor initially is what you'd want to hook to that red switch 12 volt wire. Um, I think it's usually a purple wire, like a thicker purple wire. Like one of these two bigger wires right there, either this one or this one, you'd hook it to one of those. I think it'd be this one. But it's a bigger wire like that coming out of here. It'll go to your distributor if you're uh, swapping from a small block Chevy. Uh, that's the one you would hook to the 12 volt, the red switched wire. Obviously, this truck no longer possesses that. Yeah. Oh, that was a mistake. Yuck. Blech. So yeah, I think since a lot of the wiring was already cut out of this, we don't really have the opportunity to hook into it the correct way. So we're going to have to, I think just for simplicity sake, just put some cheapo toggle switches in it. And it just so happens that I've got these two toggle switches. Jeez, this one's trying hard, isn't it? Uh, anyway, I've got these two toggle switches here that came out of Sean's Malibu. And they probably would have just gotten thrown away. So, free question mark? Because um, we're putting a switch panel in his car. These two were just, uh, I think it was fuel pump ignition. Kind of like we're doing now. So, I don't, I mean, to me, those are free. Like, <laughs> they were literally going to go in the trash. And then I don't know what we're going to do for the starter. Since the key, most likely, isn't going to work in this. Is there any toggle switches in here already? I haven't looked. No, honestly, I might just <laughs> might just put them right there. Just boop, boop. Actually, I'll probably have them pull towards me so that I can hit them off real quick. So I'm going to try to find a good spot to put these toggle switches, and then we'll get those wired up real quick. So got the toggle switches in, and it's a pretty good spot for them, I think. They feel pretty sturdy, and uh, I'll pull them for on if anything. See, well, <laughs> never mind. 
I was gonna say I can pull them for on if anything goes wrong it's easy to smack them off real quick but I immediately failed that um, so I was curious what I was gonna do for the starter because that ignition switch isn't wired up that's only being used to unlock the column right now so I was thinking this one's got uh, this first toggle switch has two separate circuits in it so I checked continuity through it and this one and this one are one circuit and then over here in this one are a separate circuit so my plan is to run the fuel pump wire through one side and the ignition 12 volt this switched one through the other side should be able to handle it fuel pump we're going that's just going to be the trigger switch to the relay at the back and then the other one we're going to use for the starter so i'm just gonna have to crank 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 fires up turn it off so this harness there's actually only one loose wire to hook up all these ones are for like uh, dummy lights and speedo tack things like that and then this chassis ground here i'm just going to wire wheel a bare spot there and then just self-tap it right there i think i'm also going to try to find or make a good ground wire to go from the block to the chassis and then another one from the chassis to the body all right so we got that red switch 12 volt wire going to a toggle switch just have to run power to the other side of it so that it's there the switch for the starter is going to be pretty simple i think we might be able to get away with just running that right from power to the switch and then from the switch down to the starter solenoid uh, I think we can get away with that. I've done it in the past with those cheapo push button ones. I think the uh, big toggle switch should be able to carry more current than that. If not, we'll run it through one of these relays. Uh, and speaking of the relay, it is time we pull one of these relays off. We're going to use it as the fuel pump relay. And uh, it's literally just going to be a wire from the toggle switch out to the relay. All right, got the relay off. We can see them a little bit better here. So 86 here. This is going to be the trigger wire. This is going to come from the switch or like uh, some triggered source. It doesn't have to be a toggle switch. It can be like something in the ECU triggers this. Uh, 30, this is going to be your 12 volt source. Ideally, I like to run this straight from the battery. Get just your full battery power. So if you got a good alternator, it'll be like 14 volts. Uh, 85 here, this is going to be to the ground. And 87, this is going to be out to whatever accessor you're trying to... Uh, power like fuel pump fan things like that and uh, if you've got a fifth prong here then when the trigger wire is not being powered so it's not like trying to activate this this will get the 12 volt so I, I usually like to use the four prong ones that way you don't like accidentally touch this against anything it doesn't happen too often but you know there's always a chance of it so you can have this powering up something while the switch is not on and then turn the switch on take power away from that and send it to something else Relays are awesome. So here's our wires for the fuel pump. Here's the ground. This is just going to get grounded to the chassis. And here's the power for it, kind of a thicker wire. Uh, so now trying to figure out where we want to mount this thing. Now something like this where it's somewhat a service item, I like to put it in a spot that's real easy to get to. These things fail, wires come loose, stuff like that. So I like to put it in a spot where it's nice and easy to get to, like if you're at the staging lanes or something and a wire comes off just from vibrations. It's nice and easy just to lay next to the truck and you can reach up here like that and check them but it's still not super visible so i like to put them in spots like this so i'm going to use this little mount for the uh e-brake cable that's no longer functional and uh, we're going to wire wheel this clean use that as the mount for the relay and for the grounds for it because there's going to be this ground and the ground for the relay itself that pin 85 you can never remember those uh so we're going to use that so i'm going to make sure everything's wire wheeled nice and clean and then uh, should be good to go. All right, so the wiring is about as done as we can get it for now. Got the relay here. You'll notice I did end up finding a socket that I had left over from uh, a different relay pack that uh, I ended up using because I didn't have enough uh, spade connectors for this. I was planning on just using the female spade connectors for it, but <laughs> I only had two left. So I was like, well, I've got this socket left over. So I'll just end up using that. Heck it. And it worked out pretty good, oddly enough. <laughs> So you can see we've got the ground here. I did wire wheel the frame here so it's clean under there. Got the ground for the relay. <laughs> I'd be lying if I said that I did not hook up the red wire from the fuel pump to the red wire on the relay on accident the first time. Just total brain fart and I was like, yeah, red to red. That makes sense. And then I was like, oh shoot, <laughs> I need to hook it to the blue. So I had to cut it and thankfully I left enough slack on the line. So yeah, the red one's going to go straight to the battery that I still have to install. And this one's running up to the switch. 
which is going through the hole in the floor for the shifter cable. <laughs> Not really the greatest way to run it, but it's gonna be fine. I could pull that wire tight, but then it'd probably end up chafing on something and wearing through, shorting out, burning the whole truck down. So, you know, leaving it loose like that's probably a better, safer idea. So that's like 95% of the wiring we had to do for this thing. Uh, the only things left are not really self-explanatory, but somewhat basic, like get the battery mounted in the back, run the cable up to the starter, and, uh, you know, things like that. Run it to the alternator for the charging post. You know, stuff like that, that if you're into hot rodding, odds are you've done it before or you have an idea on how to cover it. Now the question, how much did we spend to uh, wire up this LS swap? So like you know, the harness was $99 on eBay. After tax, it was like 104 and change. Uh, I don't know the exact number, but for just mental math right now, we'll say 104. Uh, and then like the socket for the relay, miscellaneous little fittings and stuff, we'll round it up to 110. So we've got $110 into wiring up the LS swap here. Now, like I said, this is about as basic as it's gonna get. The only way it can be any more basic is if we never cam swapped or anything like that. And that's gonna talk about the tune in a second. But yeah, this is about as basic as it's gonna get. I would say that this is easier than cutting down your own harness. It's not necessarily cheaper. You can cut down your own harness for like 10, 15 bucks. Maybe even free if you already have the stuff left over like the uh, crimp connectors and, and things like that. So now for the tune, that's kind of a different story. Now, I do have HB tuners, and I was torn on whether or not to include that in the cost, but then I was thinking and talking to a few people, and they were like, why would you include that? That's a tool. Would you count the price of your hammers and your wrenches and stuff like that? And I was like, well, no, I guess you're right. So we're going to include the cost of the credits to unlock the computer, but we're not going to include the cost of HP tuners. So the cost of credits to unlock this computer through HP tuners is a hundred bucks. It costs two credits, they're 50 bucks each. They're a hair less than 50 bucks, they're like 49 something. But rounding up, it's a hundred bucks to unlock the computer to tune it as much as you want. So realistically, uh, 210 bucks to get this all done. Now for the people who don't have HP tuners, if you're doing a bare bones LS swap, you haven't swapped the cam, anything like that, uh, there's tons of people, at least in my area, there's tons of people on Marketplace, maybe it's the same guy posting 900 times, I don't know, but um, there's people on Marketplace who you can, who have HP tuners, and for 150 bucks, they will delete the anti-theft stuff so you can fire it up. Now, uh, if you have a cam swap, probably gonna be a little bit more than that, but I think that you could still realistically find someone to do it or find a buddy or something like that or a group of you goes in on HP tuners and do it for like 300 bucks. So yeah, that is gonna do it for today's video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Thank you for watching. Thank you for following the build series of the Dime a Dozen S10. Uh, we're getting really close to firing this thing up and hopefully the weather kind of cooperates and we can make some street passes on this thing. But I don't know how soon that's gonna be. There's a bunch of little stuff I need to take care of. So I think in the next video, we might tackle the cooling system. You can see I got the water pump bolted on it. We're just gonna be using the stock truck pump. But that's it for today's video. So thank you guys for watching. Thank you for subscribing, clicking that bell, sharing the video with your friends. I'll see you next time.